All right, next we're going to get into Henry Cavill, Cavill, whatever you want to call him, the British man himself, the chest of wonders, the chin of greatness, <laughs> the buttocks of be- beautiful, no, I don't no. know. We've only seen beauty. Affleck's ass. <laughs> oh, true, true. And then we we got our it's review sad. of Watchmen, and there's a Watchmen ass, the out, Night Owl's yeah. fucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> and we got Blue Man ass. We got Hulk and, ass. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of ass. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds ass and Deadpool. Oh, yeah. Yep, we did. Yeah, a lot of man ass. <laughs> a lot of man ass. Maybe that'd be a good thing to put on Instagram. <laughs> Let's put a bunch of pictures. What's your favorite ass? <laughs> What's your favorite man ass? Perfect. I like it. That's a great poll. Uh, so- I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right so um this is a uh an in an article with comicbookmovie.com um the title of it is justice league henry cavill amidst dceu they, they use dceu as as well hasn't worked calls wonder woman first step in the right direction basically uh, Henry Cavill is, um, he, he kind of talks about what has been established already and the direction that they're going. So, this, uh, uh, real quick, this um, <clears throat> this conversation was done by a place called The Rake. Okay. And it was, um, and it was, it's some British shit. And it just, it came out of nowhere because they're talking about completely different things. Right. Like British shit, like tea and <laughs> crumpets and fucking right. baguettes or West French. Nice. Whatever. <laughs> The king's yeah, the, the queen's uh, <laughs> song and shit. I don't know. All right, so comic hip, hip, bo- governor, comic book movie. Uh, just pluck this th- this little excerpt out, I guess. Um, so his quotes are: uh, even if Marvel didn't exist, we'd struggle. There was a style they, in parentheses, DC were going for an attempt to be different and look at things from a slightly different perspective, which hasn't necessarily worked. And that depends on who you ask. Uh, yes, it has made money, but it hasn't has not been a critical success. It hasn't given everyone that sensation which superheroes should give the viewer. I think it's a wonderful time for the female hero. It is a perfect setting in social politics right now. We need it. We want that perspective, and Wonder Woman has struck at the ideal time and has become a phenomenal success, which is fantastic. Any success within the superhero universe, especially within the DC universe, is wonderful because I want to keep telling the Superman story. Selfishly, that works for me. I feel like now the right mistakes have been made and they haven't been pandered to and we can start telling the stories in the way they need to be told. It is even better to come back from a mistake or a stylistic error into the correct vein because it will make it seem so much stronger. Wonder Woman was a first step in the right direction. Um, a lot of times I like what this, the things that Henry Cavill talks about in his interviews. This is one of those, um, and, and kind of uh, backing up a little bit to what I was talking about with uh, why Warner Brothers and the DC Universe doesn't seem like it has a solid direction is because they are looking at at their movies as being critically acclaimed. They they need that that pat on the back, that two thumbs up, and the cessation <clears throat> that a superhero movie should give a viewer. Yeah. But, uh, like, mass appeal yeah ma- yeah exactly mass appeal the the smiles the laughs that you know that when you walk out of a out of a movie and it's it, it blows me away because i still have you know walking out of man of steel walking out of justice league i ha- i'm gonna use the term i had fun i i really did i had it in a different way because you there's mean, so much you mean batman versus superman what did I say? Justice League. Oh, Justice League. Oh, yeah. And like you went yeah. in fucking. Into, <laughs> oh my gosh! You in went the, into future. the future. Yeah. You didn't tell me. <laughs> How the fuck do you not take me? <laughs> you have time travel. Damn it! You got a fucking. Uh, yeah. Dog. <laughs> you got a, a flux capacitor in that mini. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So sorry. With uh, Batman v Superman, I I had fun. Yeah, and I I really enjoyed yep. where, where they were going with with those films. They were different. They they were something that. That you can, it wasn't for everyone. It wasn't mass appeal, and it sucks that it sounds like. And this was kind of the start of it. We've we've uh, watched a review um, just before recording, and that kind of seems like it's it's confirming it a little bit that Warner Brothers would rather have the mass appeal instead of you know like its own niche. Yeah. And and to say that they made mistakes, I think is asinine. I think they. Well, okay, go ahead. 
Well, so to me, well, uh, everything has is going to have plot holes. Everything. Well, what is, Warner Brothers made mistakes in is like making BVS two and a half when it should have right. been three. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But that, that's that, a mistake. Not, well, you know, releasing so, Suicide Squad. That's another mistake. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> again, putting their hands in where the director, regardless okay, of what he says, letting a trailer company edit yeah. their movie yes, and make exactly. it a music video. Yeah. But that that's yeah that's yeah. the the studio, not the director. And and that's those, those are the mistakes that they made. But with the mistakes that Henry Cavill is talking about is a stylistic approach that they've done, uh, having deeper, thought provoking films with with more Easter eggs that are not for the mass audience. And those are the ones that I selfishly enjoy more. And it's it it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be disappointing if we go in the direction of. Batman and Robin, <laughs> you know, where it's like, well, let's, Thor let's, Ragnarok's pretty fucking close. It is. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and so it is really Doctor is. Strange. So it, it, it seems like they're, instead of trying to establish their own identity, which um, they were, they started to do with the success of the Dark Knight trilogy, and then they brought it over to Man of Steel and said, you know what? We're going to stick in into this vein. Now, all of a sudden, they're like, pressing the panic button because I guess Batman v Superman didn't make a billion dollars and and now they're like well let's just do mass appeal and not have anything thought provoking and hopefully everyone walks out of this laughing and you know and we're going to sell a bunch of tickets and that's so. kind of what we he said uh, one of the things I just want to pick this apart a little bit but even even if Marvel didn't exist we'd struggle now I disagree with him on that because if Marvel didn't exist for some reason if the f Marvel formula wasn't put out there <clears throat> You would establish the not necessarily the criteria, but you would be the foundation of yeah. a superhero franchise, yeah. of a superhero universe. And people, I think, wouldn't use some of the stupid arguments of, well, why didn't they have five fucking solo movies yeah. first before Justice League? I agree. Why didn't they establish it with this? Why didn't they do it just like Marvel? Yeah. You know, you wouldn't have all those things. You wouldn't have this setup where Joss Whedon pretty much constructed a universe where make it dark, make it gritty, whatever the hell the other part is. Make it the, grim. Make yeah. it grim, but for God's sakes, tell a joke. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't have that as an established formula and your your universe could establish the thing that people might want to see and people would be i think more accepting of this if they didn't have the jokey jokey fucking universe on the other mm -hmm. end which is much easier to handle much easier to watch with kids and so forth mm -hmm. kids can watch justice league kids can watch batman versus superman mm -hmm. kids can watch man of steel let your kids be fucking people you know yeah. just don't well don't. They, they're just gonna watch it differently they're gonna watch it for the explosions and the and the action and stuff like that and then you i i love the fact that when i walked out of batman v superman that there were so many things that i caught that my, the non-comic book readers i went with didn't catch because i have no idea and and i it, it, that sounds like kind of arrogant and like ah, ha, ha, i'm i'm like you know uh hipster almost you know like oh I, I know what was going on but at the same time i'm like yeah these movies are should be made for someone like me not well, not necessarily for to, to to generate revenue of you know merchandising and all the bright colors and all the the kids and you know i don't know it's just it's weird i you, you can call it good or bad, but these movies are provoking in some manner, whether it's bad or good. But the things that happen in this movie can get people to look into your movie. Look, people are still making YouTube videos about Batman versus yeah. Superman. That yeah. guy I watch, Movie Bob, he's coming out with this whole series that's like fucking four hours long, breaking down on how that Batman versus Superman is one of the worst superhero, superhero movies ever. It's like going to be like four hours long. It's going to be ridiculously long, and he's still making it now. Like that's what a movie does, whether or not it's it's polarizing or not. When you think about Civil War, it's Civil what? No one gives a shit. It's the next one, Doctor yeah. Strange. The next one, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. The next one, Spider Man Homecoming. Give me the next one, Thor yeah. Ryan Reich. All right, now where's my fucking Black Panther? All right, right. now where's my infant? It's those movies just get lost into the shuffle and forgotten. Yeah, they don't get talked about again. But Batman versus Superman, Man of Steel. They get talked about again. People look up if they don't get something, they look up that information. Right. Yes. And it keeps exactly. the people engaged in yeah. your movies. There's a slow burn to this universe. And that's what Snyder has been talking about from the very beginning. Yeah. There's a build to this universe. There was a slow burn in tone and method into this universe going into this Justice League movie is what he planned. And people have just fucked it up. And now Henry Cavill is just he went from 
loving his Superman and thinking it's truly unique to now fucking he wants the mass appeal. He wants to fly up, wink at the camera over the over mm-hmm. Earth and fly back down, maybe save a cat out of a tree or two. Right. And he wants to do that now because he wants to continue playing Superman, which is great. But now he realizes in order for him to get Man of Steel 2, his movie is going to have to have mass appeal. Yeah. And it's it sucks. It sucks that they've given up on their experiment because so many people are closed minded. Yeah. And I, I don't want to go on onto this for too long, but uh, I, I kind of <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I kind of chuckle because uh, my boss actually he's like waiting for the superhero flame to, to, to yeah to burn out. And um, back when Batman v Superman first came out, I was like arguing like there's no way that the, and th- this was I, I went and, and saw the movie with him and 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 when I saw that I'm like they're establishing so much right now there's no way that it's gonna burn out I actually fear and maybe it might not be recent it, you know it might might not be in the near future but if you keep pumping out the same vanilla bullshit and then and you're gonna translate it to another studio I you said this I I don't remember if it was when we were recording but you said Fox is is your last hope yeah and I I fear that that is the case that we're gonna get to these vanilla superhero movies that eventually are n- not even gonna reach what the the studios want them to and then you know it all this might fade out it might fade out eventually because you're not gonna you're not creating anything new you know the and and I and granted everything does go in peaks and valleys and you know you're going to have a lull and maybe superhero movies are going to reach that point at, at, you know at some point but I think that it would be a much slower burn if you had Marvel who who has 17 fucking movies at this point or whatever 17, 17 right 17 yeah and then then you have all these other universes that are still kind of building around it and and they're doing their own thing in their own way but if you start pumping out, you have 17 movies over here, and then you have another studio that's trying to do the same fucking thing, people are going to get burnt out. And and it, I'm surprised it hasn't happened with Marvel already. And and I, I fear that eventually uh, my boss will, will laugh and go, okay, finally, the superhero fad has, has died. Now we can get something else. And, you know, for someone like me who... You know, even Suicide Squad for how shitty it was, I feel like it established some. There's some some things that could branch from that, and that's what I I'm kind of looking yeah. forward to. But who knows if, if they'll ever get to that point? So that, that's kind of my last thought on that. Yeah, I think that's going to conclude that. Yeah.